Welcome to Sports Cards once again. Now, if you've been following the channel, you know that I'm a sports card collector and I live in China. Here and there in some of my previous videos, I've mentioned a little bit about the differences I noticed between the sports card market in China and in the US, but I thought it would be worthwhile to make a video specifically about that topic now that I've been learning more and more. I do think this is valuable perspective for any sports card collectors to think about, no matter where you may reside. It's inevitable that the sports card market in China will influence the sports card market in the US and elsewhere, as it has in just about every other element of the global market economy. Sports cards in China have become a huge thing, and certain cards go for less or more money here than in the US, and I believe that these differences will and are making an actual difference in the US sports card market as well. So let's get into this and please do subscribe to the channel for lots of sports card related content. Now I actually have more to share about basketball card collecting over here in China than any other sport, so that's really where the meat of this video's content will be. But before we get into basketball, let's talk very briefly about some of the other major sports. First, let's look at baseball, football, and hockey. I'm actually gonna bunch these three together since I found their similarities between these three markets in China. Now, firstly, I should say that the card market for these three sports in China is actually very, very minimal. As such, the market here in China will likely never really affect the sports card market on a worldwide scale within these particular sports. That being said, I'm still finding some really interesting things within the card market for these sports over here that I thought would be worth mentioning. Now, when I first started collecting sports cards while living in China, I pretty much just ignored these sports, but my tune has changed. While there aren't a vast number of cards available in baseball, football, or hockey, there are some. I found that cards that are very high value cards of very big names, like Mahomes and Tom Brady in football, for example, or maybe Mike Trout in baseball, these cards, at least the ones that are higher valued, like maybe let's say $75 and above raw, they end up going for prices that are pretty similar to their eBay comps. Whereas most rookies or star cards under $75 or so tend to go for much less than eBay comps, often in the range of even a quarter to half price kind of thing. Now I have a theory as to why this is. I think there are nearly no actual card collectors domestically in China within these three sports, but there are card dealers who are trying to make some money with any sport. So for the more expensive cards, it's worth it for them to bid higher and get the card with the hope that they can sell it abroad, most likely in the US, on eBay. However, for the cards that are under $75 or so, the expensive cost and inconvenience of international shipping just makes it not worthwhile, even if they could buy it for like a quarter of the eBay comp. Without a domestic market for these particular sports, the prices essentially have to factor in expensive international shipping. Now for me personally, this means I'm now starting to bid quite often on baseball and football cards specifically bid in these cheaper range of cards, worth like maybe $5, $75 or so, with the intention of eventually bringing them back to the US. I don't think I could ever really flip them or resell them here on the Chinese market for any profit at all, but holding onto them and just carrying them myself back to the US in the future seems like a good plan. Also, just to note before moving on to the next sport, I think the same basic pattern would apply to other more minor sports as well, like maybe UFC or golf or whatever other sports have cards. Um, there just isn't much of a domestic market, but there might be some more of a market in the US. All right, now let's get into basketball and actually soccer too. Uh, this is the meat of the video here. The basketball and soccer card markets in China are hot. These two sports are super popular here and have been for a very long time. Now, as sports cards have become very popular in China over the past decade and a half or so, it's definitely these two sports that have led the way. And it is in these two sports where the Chinese domestic card market can also have the biggest influence on the wider card market in general, I would suggest. Now, I'm gonna be focusing what I say specifically on basketball since I personally don't collect soccer cards, but I think pretty much everything I say here is also relevant within the soccer card conversation as well. Since I have a lot to say here, I'm gonna break it down into specific bullet points. Bullet point one, goats go for premium in China. Now, while in the US market this is also true, in my observation, it is even more evident within the Chinese market. Scrolling through different cards for sale, you, you can sometimes find really good deals for this player, I don't know, a Durant or a Curry or a Giannis, but you will never find good deals for Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, or LeBron James. Those three players in particular. Cards from those players tend to go, in my observations, for a solid amount higher than the average eBay comps, and auctions always have many, many bidders for these three players. Even cards that are really quite common sell easily on Chinese auction sites from these three guys. In my view, there's two main reasons for this. One is similar to why these three players also sell for higher than other players in the US, and that is a belief in long-term investment potential. They are more sure things than anyone, so a card from one of them is a good long-term investment. That's a truth anywhere you are. 
But in China, I think there's a second factor that makes these three players in particular have cards that sell for even more than they do in the US. These three players in particular have become almost more than humans in China, almost like their own luxury brand in and of themselves. The luxury brand market in China is hotter than anywhere else in the world. Luxury clothing brands, luxury watches, all of these have leapt forward in the past 10 or 20 years in China at, at an astronomical rate. As Chinese people get wealthier, luxury brands take off. MJ, Kobe, and LeBron are like the luxury brand models of basketball cards, and their cards sell like that. Now, if you've ever sold any high-end cars from one of these three players on eBay, there's a very good chance your buyer was from China. And more than likely, if that buyer was a car dealer, they were probably able to resell it on the Chinese domestic market for a good margin of profit. All right, the second point, rookie prospecting is not as big of a thing in China. In the US, you can see certain unproven players' rookie cards take off in value like crazy on the hope that that player will eventually, someday, turn into the new big thing in the league. And then inevitably, 99% of those players' cards will eventually decrease significantly in value and people just say, oh well, it's a gamble, I lost. But in China, this rookie gamble isn't so common, for the most part. It's not completely absent, but it just isn't so pervasive across the hobby like it seems to be in the US. There are certain rookies who seem to catch fire a little bit more when there is more of a general consensus that that player is the real deal. But previous to a player showing and proving it, his cards will likely be very cheap. Whereas premium cards from players like, say, James Wiseman, Tyrese Maxey, Emmanuel Quickly, Pokashevsky, Denny Avdia, Patrick Williams, etc., they can sometimes fetch a, a premium in the US on the hope that these players' potential pans out into stardom. In China, that rookie risk is generally avoided. Even some young players who are closer to shore things, like, say, Tyrese Halliburton, also fall into this category, where their cards are just incredibly undervalued if you compare them to the US market. As such, for me personally, this means I can pick up some really great cards from some of these youngins, like Halliburton in particular is who I'm aiming for, because I think he has a really incredibly bright future, and I'm getting them for a quarter or half of eBay comps relatively easily. Even the more kind of quote-unquote stars of the rookie class, like Lamelo and Edwards in this case, can sometimes fall into this category too, though not always. For Lamelo and Edwards, their more high-end cards will more often go for something closer to the eBay comps, while their lower-end and base rookie cards will go for much less. I've actually picked up like 10 different NBA Hoops Lamelo base rookie cards recently at an average price of like two to three bucks a piece when they go for about 13 bucks in the US. If I was in the US, I'm sure I wouldn't be stocking up on these Hoops Lamelo rookie cards because 13 bucks seems too high for me. But when I can get them for one sixth of that price, I figured I might as well grab a handful. All right, the third bullet point. Graded cards are more rare in China than in the US for now, but maybe not for long. Now in the US, if you wanna get a card graded, you have lots of well-respected options to consider, and it's generally a pretty straightforward process. I mean, there may be a lot of delays more recently, but you still got a lot of good options. PSA, BGS, SGC, HGA, CSG, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, ABC, DEFG. There's even a lot of places you could consider taking your cards to for pre-grading to make sure you're sending in only the best possible candidates for high grades. But in China, sending your cards in for grading is not so easy or common, yet. There's a few Chinese domestic graders, but generally it seems like the value of those cards are just the tiniest bit higher than raw cards, even on the Chinese domestic market, so they aren't particularly popular or commonly used. And since those graders aren't helping you sell your cards at all on the international market, they really aren't used much by dealers or serious collectors at all. Beckett has seemed to have some interest in expanding their market more into China, but they haven't really done that much. CSG, on the other hand, has done a lot. CSG has partnered with Chinese domestic online platforms and bigger card dealers to try to streamline the process for card trading domestically. This is all relatively new, like maybe early 2021 kind of thing, so whether it really results in anything much more concretely is still unknown, but it does seem like CSG is the only card grading company that is really setting itself up to be strong in the Chinese market. At least that's what it seems like to me. I think this situation may eventually end up influencing the worldwide card market as well, especially with what's going on with the number of grading companies these days. With BGS having major years-long delays in their grading services, and with PSA getting rid of their lower-end cost options, at least for the time being, it's created an opportunity for other grading companies to become considered more often by collectors than they were previously. In the US market, you can see how SGC has risen in the minds of a lot of collectors as a solid option to consider with, within the current environment, as well as HEA and CSG kind of pretty close behind and solidly worthwhile as an option for many. 
But in my own analysis, knowing how much effort CSG is making within the Chinese domestic market, I think this could be a strategic advantage for them on the worldwide market as well, eventually. I could easily see a reality where CSG becomes the common go-to grader for the Chinese domestic market, which in turn would cause many more CSG cards to also find their way into the US market as a result. Since CSG is pretty clearly a reputable and good quality grading service who has significant experience in grading comic books and other collectibles, I have a feeling this will raise their stock in the minds of a lot of collectors as they begin to see these cards available on the market more and more. Now, I could be completely wrong about all of this, but it seems very possible to me that CSG could become a more premier grading company in the sports card world as a result of all of this. Bullet point number four. The singles from some less common card brands can go much cheaper in China than in the US. Now, this is not necessarily across the board completely, but in general, it seems like single cards from Prism, Select, and Optic, and maybe Revolution 2, tend to sell in China for pretty similar to what the eBay comps are. But cards from somewhat less common brands like Crown Royale, Court Kings, National Treasures, Origins, Noir, and Elite, they tend to go for far less here, at least as far as single cards are concerned. Now, I don't know for sure why this is, but I do have some theories. Now, if you shop around on Taobao and Card Hobby, two of the most common online platforms for sports cards collectors in China, to find boxes or packs of cards, you'll find copious amounts of Select, Prism, Optic, Donruss, Revolution, Hoops, and maybe a few others. And for the most part, the costs you'd be paying for them are not too significantly different than what you'd pay for in the US, maybe a little bit less. You can sometimes find some really good prices here and there for some of them, especially for some of the lower end of the bunch, like Donruss and Hoops, but even for them, not always. However, you will have a much tougher time finding anything for sale from quite a number of those other less common brands that I mentioned. As such, you don't see as many of them on the card market for sale either, on the second hand market. And when they are there, there just doesn't seem to be as much interest. And I'm guessing it's because they just aren't particularly well-known brands by a lot of domestic card collectors. If you don't know too much about a particular brand, you're certainly much less likely to buy from that brand. So these cards can sometimes end up going for pretty inexpensive. The one exception to this, as far as I can tell, is Crown Royale. Now Crown Royale packs and boxes can actually be found pretty easily in China, both as single cards and as unopened boxes. However, the Asia exclusive boxes from Crown Royale seem to sell for significantly cheaper here than any of the Crown Royale boxes sell for in the US. As such, Crown Royale singles can often be found quite easily for less than half of what they go for on eBay. Knowing this, I personally would probably never buy Crown Royale cards in the US, but I would buy plenty of them in China. I have a feeling that eventually the value of Crown Royale cards on the US market and the China market will eventually meet closer to the middle somewhere between the two, which would mean that the Crown Royale card value in the US would probably go down and the card value in China would probably go up just to kind of fix the market. Because I think there's a little bit of an off balance right now at the moment between the US market and the China market with Crown Royale cards. As such, if I was in the US right now, I'd probably try to sell off the Crown Royale cards I had. Now, I think there's probably other observations I could mention here, but this video is getting pretty long, and I think I've already mentioned the ones that stand out the most to me. Now, I hope you enjoyed this reflection. Keep in mind, these are all just based on my own observations, so don't take any of this as fact. My take on this could be completely wrong, but I do think card investors in the US would be wise to try to understand the Chinese market better. Just like everything else in the worldwide market economy, the Chinese market has a definite influence, and sports cards are no different. So understanding this market is only a benefit to sports cards collectors. With that being said, please do subscribe to the channel. I'm trying to make some good content for you guys. It's a very new channel. It is a lot of work, but I want to st stick with this. I want to try to get a bit of an audience here i want to try to see if i can actually build something with this youtube channel so if you subscribe if you like if you comment it really helps inspire me to keep going with these things so please please do thank you so much all right with that being said that's all i have for you check you later